Good evening, friends. Welcome to another Sunday night devotional from here at Salem Creek Church of Christ. We're so happy that you have uh, joined us this evening, and I hope that these few minutes we spend together in looking at the Word of God will be a blessing to your life. And speaking of that, I want you to know if there's any way that we can assist you, we would love for you to give us a call here at Salem Creek. Our telephone number is area code 615 893-7532. And you're also invited to come worship with us at any of our worship assemblies. We meet on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for worship. We then have uh, Sunday school starting at 1015. There are classes for all age groups. At six, uh, 530, rather, on Sunday night, we have Sunday evening worship. 10 o'clock on Wednesday morning, we have our ladies' Bible class, and then we meet again at um, 6.45 on Wednesday night for Wednesday night Bible study hour. We would love for you to join us for any of those occasions. If there's any way that we can help you, again, give us a call here at the Salem Creek Church of Christ. Our telephone number is area code 615-893-7532. Well, let's open our Bibles tonight. We're going to take a look at a passage from the 33rd chapter of the book of Exodus. I'm going to begin by reading verses 12 through 23. where well, the Bible says that Moses said to the Lord, You say to me, Bring up this people, but you yourself have not let me know whom you will send with me. Moreover, you have said, I have known you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now therefore, I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know your ways that I may know you, so that I may find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence shall go up with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up from here. For how then can we know that I found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not by your going with us that we, uh, that I and your people may be distinguished from all the other people who are on the face of the earth? Then the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing of which you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight, and I have known you by name. Then Moses said, I pray you, show me your glory. And he said, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man can see me and live. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand there on a rock. And it will come about, while my glory is passing by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand away, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Well, there's so much in that passage that could just reach out and grab our attention. We don't have time tonight to talk about all of it. But there are a couple of points I, I want to make about Moses who says to God, unless you go with us, we're not going to move one single step. In Exodus chapter 32, we saw one of the darkest chapters in the history of the children of Israel. I'm talking about in their entire history from the time God led them out of the land of Egypt and the time uh, the nation of Judah went away into captivity in Babylon. And that's in chapter 32 where the Israelites came to Moses, and, or rather to Aaron, the brother of Moses, and said, make a God who will go before us. Unfortunately, Aaron was not a good leader. He gave in to that ungodly request from the people. He made the golden calf. The people bowed down and worshiped the golden calf. Moses um, was just about to come down from the mountain, evidently. He heard all that noise, and God says, that, that's not the noise of worship. That's not the noise of praise. The people have broken out. And Moses understood what God was talking about when he said that. Uh, they were committing idolatry. They were behaving in a very ungodly way in the worship of that golden calf. 
And, and so as he's coming down from the mountain, Moses threw down those two tablets of stone upon which were written the Ten Commandments. He shattered them into uh, all sorts of pieces. God punished his people very severely in that chapter. Well, then you come to chapter 33 in the very beginning of that chapter in verse 1. The Bible tells us that the Lord spoke to Moses. Now hang on that phrase for just a moment. The Lord spoke to Moses. Hold on to it. Don't turn loose of it in a moment. We're going to come back to that idea of God speaking to Moses. But there he spoke to him, and he said, Depart from here, you and the people whom you have brought from the land of Egypt, to the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your descendants I will give it. Kind of God's way of saying to Moses, Okay, it's time for this journey to begin. And by the way, they had been there at that mountain for something like a year uh, and as you progress through chapter 33, you read some very interesting things that tell us that uh, Moses would go into the tent of meeting. That's the tabernacle that Moses built, that he had built. And uh, that's one of the things that he got from God while he was up on that mountain, the very specific directions about how to build that tabernacle. It's referred to as the tent of meeting. The Bible tells us in Exodus 33 that Moses would go into that tent of meeting, and when he did, the pillar of cloud would come down. And when you read about that pillar of cloud in verse 9 of Exodus 33, think about that pillar of cloud through which God manifested himself beginning back in Exodus chapter 13 and verse 21, which appeared to um, lead the Israelites on their journey during the daytime when that that pillar of cloud stopped, they would stop, they would encamp at that place. And so Moses would go into the tent of meeting. Now the pillar of cloud would come down, stand beside the tent of meeting, and Exodus chapter 33 and verse 11 describes meetings that took place between God and Moses inside the tent of meeting. Listen to this statement. It's a very beautiful statement. It's full of meaning. The Bible says, Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face just as a man speaks to his friend. I love that expression, don't you? The Lord used to speak to Moses, just as a man speaks to his friend face to face. And remember I told you a while ago, I asked you a while ago to remember that statement, to hang on that statement where it is said that the Lord would speak to Moses. What we find out is, and we're going to think about that tonight in a moment, there was a very warm and close relationship between Moses and the Lord. There are two things tonight I want us to take from this text, and I hope they're helpful to you. The first of those is to pause and see that Moses had a great passion for the Lord. He was not indifferent about the Lord, about serving the Lord, about his relationship with the Lord, but he was very passionate about that. You see that, do you not? in the change that has come over Moses. Go back to the early stages of the book of Exodus when Moses is 80 years old and he's tending the sheep of his father-in-law at this very mountain. And the Lord appeared to him in a burning bush. And when he appeared to him, he called him to go back to Egypt to lead his people out of Egypt and on their journey to the promised land. Do you remember how reluctant Moses was to accept that mantle of leadership and how he offered excuse after excuse, literally begging with God not to call him to assume that position of leadership, let him do, let somebody else uh, be the leader? Well, he goes from being the reluctant leader to being the very passionate leader. You see it, I think, in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 19, by the way, where he threw down those two tablets containing the Ten Commandments and he shattered them. I don't know how many pieces they, uh, they shattered into, but it's more than just breaking in two. The text really says that, that he shattered them. His passion is very clear, is it not, here in Exodus chapter 33. That task which he was so reluctant to take up early in the book of Exodus. Now, he's not about to give up that task for anything. There would be a lot of leaders who would be so discouraged by the idolatry of the people they were leading had they been in Moses' situation. A lot of people I know would have said, 
God, you can forget this. Get somebody else to take this people. I'm going somewhere else. I'm going back to taking care of my father-in-law's sheep. He didn't do that. In fact, he interceded on behalf of the people in a very profound, a very deep way, a very passionate way, so that God would block him out of his book of records rather than the people. You see there his passion for the Lord and for the task to which he had been called. He always stood ready to serve. In verse 7 of Exodus chapter 33, where it, when, when the Bible talks about his setting up the tent of meeting, and it's in that part of the discussion where he goes into the tent of meeting and God comes and talks to him. The Bible says that everyone who saw the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Why? Because that's where Moses resorted to get a word from God. And they knew that if they had questions, if there were issues to settle, they needed to go there to talk to Moses. And perhaps it's implied there that Moses could get an answer from God about pressing matters. And imagine how much energy that that role required of Moses. You don't do something like that if you don't have a great passion for the Lord and if you don't have a great passion for the Lord's people. I also want us to think tonight for just a moment about how Moses sought the presence of the Lord. And here's where I think we can make a tremendous application for our lives tonight. What is implied by Moses' repeated appearances at the tent of meeting? That's where God meets with his people. And Moses keeps going back to the tent of meeting. In verse 9, tells us that Moses would go to the tent of meetings very clearly implied there that he would go there to have conversations with God because the text says that the Lord would speak to Moses. Moses would go into the tent of meeting, the tabernacle. The pillar of cloud would come down, stand by the tent of meeting, and the Lord would speak to Moses. Why does he go there? Because he knows he understands that that's where he can have a meeting with God, where he can have a conversation with God. Now, there's a very deep relationship between Moses and God. Sometimes we may not feel very close to God, and if that's the case, it's not because God has distanced himself from us. It's because we have distanced ourselves from God. There's a very intimate relationship between the Lord and Moses. When you look back at Exodus chapter 33 and verse 12, you hear these words. Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people, but you yourself have not let me know whom you will send with me. Moreover, you have said, now this is Moses saying something to God. God, you have said, I have known you by name, and I have also found favor, you have also found favor in my sight. Think about that statement there. Moses is quoting the Lord when he says, you have said, God, you're the one who said this. I know you by name. And that's going to be repeated later on in Exodus chapter 33. That implies a very intimate relationship. When God says to Moses, listen, Moses, I know you by name. In verse 33, Moses says to the Lord, now therefore I pray to you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know your ways so that I may know you, so that I may find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. Let me know your ways, God, so that I can find favor in your sight. He had a burning desire to know the Lord, the burning desire to know the ways of the Lord. Now, in this whole chapter, God has started out by saying something to Moses that no doubt caught Moses' attention and concerned him. Go back and read verse 3 and verse 4 with me of Exodus chapter 33. God says that I'm, in verse 2 that I'm going to send an angel before you. I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, uh, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey. I will not go up in your midst. Did you hear that? God says to Moses, you people go on up. I'm going to send my angel before you to drive out the inhabitants of the land, but I am not going up in your midst. That surely concerned Moses. 
And he had to be equally comforted when you come to verse 13 and 14 and 15 of this chapter where he gets some very good news from the Lord where uh, he says to the Lord, Now I pray you if I found favor in your sight, let me know your ways so that I can know you and so that I may find favor in your sight. Consider this is, is your people. It's like he's pleading with the Lord here. And then the Lord says to him, verse, verse 14, My presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. Think about how it must have relieved Moses to hear God say, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. But then look at verse 15, where Moses said to the Lord, If your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up from here. Your presence isn't going with us, God. Just let us sit right where we are. Don't lead us up from here. Don't let us go up from here if your presence does not go with us. What's Moses saying there? Lord, we depend on you. I don't know how to leave this great people without your presence. We don't know the way to the promised land without your presence. There are obstacles to overcome. We cannot overcome those obstacles without your presence, O Lord. And so he doesn't want to go one single step on the rest of that journey unless the Lord's presence goes with him. It's not going to take one more step unless God promises to accompany him in that journey. How many steps would we take without the Lord? I believe a problem for some of us, if we just be honest about it, is that some of us try to take way too many steps without the Lord. I'm pretty sure how many steps are too many to take without the Lord. One. One step taken without the Lord is too many steps to take. If you're about to make a decision that is going to lead you away from God, if you're about to go to a place that you know you're not going to find God there, that God would not go with you there, if you're going to get involved in a relationship of which God would not approve, if you're going, to, if you were planning to commit some kind of sin, and you know for sure God is not going to be with you in doing that, don't do it. Because every time you do, you're taking a step without the Lord, and you cannot live a well-ordered life when you try to take one single step without the Lord. Moses sought the presence of the Lord, and we need to seek his presence in our own lives. When we seek the Lord's presence, you know, we don't have to worry. We don't have to fear. Psalm 23 and verse 4, the great shepherd psalm says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. When you go with God's presence, you don't have to fear. When you go with God's presence, you do not lack for direction. Psalm 23 and verse 3, David acknowledges of the Lord, you lead me in the paths of righteousness. The Lord leads us in paths of righteousness. What direction are we going? Well, when we take those steps with God, when we seek his presence, we have that road map that he gives us through his word. We have his guidance. A lot of people tonight are living in fear. And the reason they're living in fear is they're not trusting the Lord. A lot of people tonight would say, I don't know which way to go. I don't know which direction to turn. And they're saying that because they've turned away from the Lord and they've turned away from his guidance. I'll tell you something, friends. We need to imitate Moses in this respect. We need to have a passion for God, and we need to very passionately seek his presence. Well, I say our time is gone for tonight. Bow with me, and we'll close in prayer. Father, we give to you praise and honor and glory. We confess to you that there have been so many times in our lives that we have not sought you, that we've not been passionate about you. But when we read about Moses and his passion for you and his seeking your presence, we're so encouraged to do the same thing. And Father, even though at times it may seem too difficult to follow in your ways, help us to understand that it is far more difficult and exceedingly dangerous and spiritually destructive when we take even one step without you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thank you for tuning in tonight. We invite you to join us again next week. Until then, may God richly bless your life.